Hey dudes, welcome to Hyla Cooking. I'm Hyla. Guess what month it is? It's November. That's right. That means it's Thanksgiving month in the good old US of A and possibly parts of Canada. I'm not really sure about that. But today I'm going to show you how to roast a turkey. Um, yay, awesome. And that's like the most important, biggest part of Thanksgiving meal, unless you're vegetarian. But I'm not. So I'm going to show you how to make a delicious, moist, and succulent turkey. So I've got like a 12 and a half pound turkey here. It's the smallest one I could find. I've been eating turkey for a while. Um, but I'm gonna stuff it with some apple and onion and parsley and garlic. And then I'm gonna mix up uh, like an injection um, sauce and use this awesome looking needle to squirt it full of flavor and moisture and all those things that'll keep it from like drying out and stuff in the oven and it'll taste super delish. Okay, so I'm gonna cut up my stuffing ingredients right now. And oh, also I've already like rinsed and dried and pulled out the neck and the gizzards and all that stuff, giblets. Um, okay, set that aside and I'll cut up some stuff real fast, BRB. All right, I cut up all my stuff and I'm gonna put most of it inside the cavity of this bird. Oh, and this little pop-up timer that they come with Get rid of that. It's not very reliable. Okay, so I've got my, oh wait, you know what I should do first? Salt and pepper this puppy inside and out. Okay, so this is a 12 pound bird. I'm gonna go ahead and just assume I need a tablespoon of salt. And I'm gonna do some more stuff on the outside of the bird later. So I'm gonna put most of this on the inside. Bloop. And some pepper. And you notice I was holding it by that little plastic loop to do. Um, that came in the turkey and you're not supposed to take it out, which is totally fine because I tried to and I couldn't. So let's just utilize it. Just kidding. I hate when people say utilize instead of use. Okay. There we go. Well, as long as we're up here, I'm just gonna go ahead and, oh, <laughs> that was stupid. Okay, I won't do it that way. I'll do it this way. <laughs> and just kind of alternate your onions and your apples. And if you wanted to put some celery in there, that'd be good. Um, you notice, obviously I'm not stuffing it with actual stuffing. Um, if you wanted to do that, you could go ahead and make the stuffing. I have a great recipe for cornbread stuffing, by the way, also, um, in a video from last year. And you would want it room temperature or warm and just kind of like loosely stick it in there. Um, you don't want to like pack it tight. Okay, then I'm gonna definitely use the parsley stems in here. I'm gonna save the tops and chop those up later and put it under the skin. That'll be yummy. Okay, just cram it on in there. Okay, great, awesome. All right, rinse up, and then I'll set this aside, and then we'll start injecting like med scientists. <laughs> okay, so I've got my um, injection mixture here, which is chicken broth and butter and a little bit of Tabasco, just because I like it spicy. And I'm gonna suck this up into my injecting thing like so and you can put whatever you want in this little mixture um, I like to keep it pretty simple but uh, you do want to make sure you don't put anything like big chunks of stuff that's gonna stop up your humongo needle and just kinda jab it in you don't want to go like all the way through to the inside because then you're not really injecting the meat but you want to make sure you put it far enough in that it doesn't just leak back out. And then just kind of slowly squeeze it in. And my thing is leaking a little bit. Okay, and then I'm go over here. And you can skip this step, but um, 
it really does make the white meat, which tends to get a little bit dry, uh, it makes it really moist. And if you would rather not spend $4 on this little injecting thing that still kind of leaks apparently, um, you could just cover the whole, like slab it, slab it with some butter on top. And then it's also kind of cool because when you go cut into it, um, you can see the little lines where all the injecting stuff is, which is another reason I kind of like to do the Tabasco because then it's like a little bit red and it's pretty. Okay, let's go ahead and call that done. Um, I'll use this to base the top of it later. So now I've got, I'm going to do the shoving of the herbs under the skin. And I've got the parsley and some more garlic and some dried rosemary and sage because I want those flavors that are going to be in my stuffing to also be involved in the turkey, kind of complement, complementary flavors, if you will. So more gross stuff coming up. Let's get to shoving. Okay, so kind of get your finger in here and you can feel like, kind of break this membrane. There we go. Okay, we made it. All right, so there's that side. So I'm just gonna shove some of my herby mixture in there. Try to get it down there around the leg and stuff. Mm -hmm. And let's go over on this side. It's kind of gross. Sorry, guys. Got to do it. Well, you don't have to do it, but I'm going to do it. Hey! Cool. Awesome. There's some going in there. That's awesome. That's great. And it's times like these. I wish I had extra long fingers. Okay. Let's get some up here. It's almost like a puppet. Okay. Cool. I think that's as far as I can get in there. So I'm just going to take the rest of my business and throw it in the inside. Okay, so everything's all stuffed in there and the skin's all stuffed and now I'm going to truss it, which is a cool thing to know how to do. So let's turn this around. Okay, so I've got this piece of butcher's twine that's about four times the length of the bird. And I'm going to tie the little legs together like that. Good. Awesome. No, not a bow. Don't do a bow, Hyla. Okay, and then come back around. Loop around the little wingies. Like so. And then come back here and tie it in a tight little knot. And that's just going to keep it all like real compact um, so the wings don't flop out. It'll be better shaped when you're done and it'll cook a little more evenly. Okay, awesome. Now we're ready to put it in our pan and bake it. Thumbs up, dudes. All right, so carefully move it into my pan. I've got a, a little rack, just like a heavy duty, like cooling rack or something, just to hold it right off the bottom so the air will circulate and it'll cook a little bit faster. And this is a 12 pound turkey, so 12 minutes per pound at 325 degrees. Uh, that means 12 and a half pounds times 12 is like 150, and so that's like two and a half hours. And then we'll check the temperature. And I'll just throw the rest of this stuff over the top. What the hay? Cool. Major yums, dudes. All right. Catch you in a few hours. Oh, it's really heavy. Ta-da! Turkey time! All right, so this is cool. You notice I'm not burning my hands because it's been out of the oven for about 30 minutes and I just threw some foil over it and let it hang out for a little while to let it rest, let the juices redistribute. And, oh yeah, and I checked the temperature in the thigh, like down there. And when it registers 170 degrees, that's when you take it out of the oven. And that's Fahrenheit for you European types. Um, okay, 
I'm just going to get a little turkey bite. Whoa. Ooh, look at all that turkey skin. It's crunchy and herby. Mmm, man, that's a juicy turkey. Cool. All right, well, carving a turkey is a fun thing, and it's very much like carving a chicken. And if you have gotten my Learn to Cookbook, you'll know, you will know, that there is a video on how to carve a chicken in there. And that's very helpful, and all those rules can be applied to this, but on a grander scale. Um, otherwise, you just kind of ch-ch-ch. Carve, 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 chop, 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 chop. But your dad also probably knows how to do that, and he probably wants to, so you should just let him. Okay, have a happy Thanksgiving, everybody. Bye!